Hey everybody, welcome into the Nesson Studios. Michaela Vernava, Andre Kachatorian, and we are joined by UFC featherweight fighter Kyle Bokniak. Kyle, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Seems like just yesterday sort of <laughs> we had you guys in here coming off your big win at UFC 220 in Boston. Now you're heading out to Brooklyn for 223. Gonna be an exciting one. Just how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling excited. Uh, you know, came off that big win, UFC 220 in Boston. I'm um, now Quick turnaround, had about a week off, went to Disney World, got the call that everybody didn't want to fight this kid, Zabit. Um, you know, I took the fight, six weeks, now we're here, and I can't wait to rumble next week. Yeah, so your fight against Zabit Magomed Sharipov, it's you quite got it right. Uh, Our, my job is to be able to pronounce names like that, and I have been saying it over and over like a thousand times <laughs> all morning long, and I still don't think I will get it right. Yeah, it's but. tough, it's a tough one. <laughs> But uh, Kyle, so you, you're preparing for this fight. Last fight, you talked about how you were fighting for a contract. Yeah. And then, so what happened with that now? Uh, obviously, you got a new contract. You're yeah, yeah, fighting definitely. This so yeah, exactly. Um, so I was one and two in the UFC before going to my last fight, um, January 20th. Um, so I knew I needed to put on a good performance in hopes to get another UFC contract and um, follow my dreams. And, um, you know, I put on a good performance. I had to kind of play it safe with um, Brendan, Brandon Davis. I think I, you know, put on a good performance and opened a lot of people's eyes that I deserve another opportunity. And I think they gave me this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> they think they're throwing me to this kid who has a lot of hype behind him. Um, supposedly to everybody else, I'm supposed to be the sacrificial lamb. I'm supposed to fall down, lay down for this kid and let him climb these rankings. But that's not, that's not how it's going to happen. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to throw down and I'm going to be ready. Those are the words too I'm seeing everywhere. It's I love it. Official lamb. I love it. What is, how does that <laughs> make you feel when you read stuff like that? Uh, it just revs me up. It just I'm a kind of person who always thinks I'm an underdog. I have something to prove to myself. I don't really care about what others think, but for some reason, th those words are pissing me off. And I just want to train as hard as I can and just shed blood in this cage next week and show this punk that you know I'm here for a reason. Kyle Bokniak is a contender, and I'm just going to go in there and put everything on the line. Well, you are a major underdog. What yeah. is your strategy going to be, and how can you pull off the upset, do you think? I'm just going to be super aggressive, go in there. Um, a lot of these kids are mentally beat before they go in the cage with this guy. Um, I'm not that type of person. I'm afraid of no one. I go in there and I bring it every time. Um, I'm going to come forward, eat his punches, defend his takedowns, and just throw bombs. And once he feels that I am not beat and he takes that gasp of air, I know I have him. And I'm just going to turn up the fire and just keep it going. Now, opening day in baseball started this week, and you know, yeah. you are the leadoff guy in Boston, the leadoff guy in Brooklyn. How is that like, just being the first guy out there? Um, yeah, I'm the first fight on UFC Fight Pass. I think it's at 6.15, so I kick off the entire night. Um, you know, it, I like it because I get to sit back after and watch all the fights <laughs> and watch my teammate Calvin Cater go, go at it as well. But um, like last, last January 20th, um, I was the first one to go in the cage between me, um, Calvin, and Rob. And I set the tone, had a good performance, and I'm going to do it again next week. Now, you are at the height and reach disadvantage. Your mm. opponent, I'm going to go by his first name, Zabit, is yep. <laughs> much taller than you. Do you look at that as a major disadvantage, and how do you plan to combat that? Yeah, no, I don't. I, I like fighting taller guys. I'm usually always a smaller guy anyway, so I'm used to fighting taller guys. Um, they're going to have to punch, try to get down, punch me. I'm going to go up, overhand rice and stuff like that. But... You know, I just got to close the distance as quick as possible, be explosiveness, um, and um, you know, he's going to have a lot of holes in this game. He can't cover all the holes. He's got big arms, long torso, so there's going to be a lot of openings. Now, first thing I, sorry, first thing I noticed when you walked in here into the mess and you parked your car, you came out of the car with this <laughs> huge jug of water, yeah. massive jug of water, yeah. I'm like, wow, so it must be a uh, weight cutting time. So tell, tell people who don't know what the weight cutting process is like, where you're at right now with that, and what's going to be going down for the next week and a half leading up to the fight. Yeah, so, um, you know, about 10 days, I start cutting the carbs a little bit, start just water loading, drinking lots and lots of water so my body thinks it's hydrated. Um, How much water do you drink right now? Two to three gallons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I already went before this, but I'm sure I'm going to have to go again right after. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, I have to lose about 15 to 20 pounds. Um, that all happens in a week, and it all comes right back on. 
Now, I'm curious about the mental aspect of this training camp because last time we had you in after your win at 220, you talked about how that was a real do or die, do or die fight for you. Now, having the new contract, yeah. is that a bit of a weight off your shoulders and how does that affect your training this time around? Um, yeah, it's a, little, it's a weight off my shoulders knowing I have another four fight contract. Um, but, you know, in, in this league, that can change um, at any moment. They can cut you, they can release you if you don't like your performance, or they give, you can renegotiate for a mo another contract. So, you know, that stuff doesn't really mean anything. All I know is I have a fight on April 7th, and I need to show up and put on my best performance of my life. So, that's what it is. Now, also on April 7th, uh, you know, Huge, probably the biggest fight of the year with uh, so far with Tony Ferguson and Habib Nurmagomedov. What are your thoughts on just the main event of that fight, and what do you expect to see? Yeah, that's that's fireworks right there. Um, everybody's been wanting to see this fight for a long time. They both have very di diverse, different um, styles. Uh, Khabib's just you know he's a grinder. Ferguson, he's also has slick jujitsu, very unorthodox strikes. Um, so uh, it can go either way. I don't know, but it's I think that's one of the best matchups I've seen in the sports history so i think it's going to be a, def a definitely awesome main event and the best main event for this year do you feel like you're ready to fight in a place like brooklyn i mean you came out in boston set the tone for all the boston guys that was a huge night td garden was really rocking yeah. and now to be able to fight in new york city yeah um you know new york is awesome it's right next door i'm sure i'm gonna have a lot of booze because boston versus new york um <laughs> Zabi, i know he's he i think he has a gym in um Long Island, I uh, know New Jersey, so they're close by. They have a good fan base there. Um, lots of their fans gonna be there. Um, so I'm going to probably hostile territory, even though he's the Russian and I'm the American. But I don't care. And um, you know, it's, it's an honor to fight in New York. But you know, I love Boston. That was that was special. Um, I don't know if anything will compare to that, but. You know, I'm going in there ready to throw down. So no, I'm excited. I have to say, you have been relatively tame. I was kind of expecting you to go crazy because you said <laughs> yeah, in this did. interview, <laughs> you know, am I allowed yeah. to swear? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you do get fired up. You seem pretty composed yeah, right try, now, though. Yeah, trying to keep it calm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, I, he called him up. You call, you call him some names. I like that. I did. I did. <laughs> so it was good. It was good. Saving it for the octagon, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, April 7th, I just can't wait. I'm going to let it all go. Um, you know, I've been training so hard for this fight. I haven't been doing anything. My diet's been clean. You know, going to bed early, waking up early, training two to three times a day. And just, I'm ready to ready to throw down with this kid. Everybody thinks, like I said, they think I'm going to lay down. And he's going to walk right over me. And I just can't wait to prove everybody wrong and just get this win. Yeah, last I checked on uh, the, the Vegas Sportsbook, you have a you're plus 550 yeah. underdog. So I don't know bet, so I don't even know what that means. But <laughs> all I know is everybody thinks I'm going to lose this fight. And I just can't wait to go in there and just win this. Right. <laughs> All right, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Well, amen to that, Kyle. Thanks for joining yeah. us today.